to our channel. Don't forget to subscribe if you already haven't. And today's video, George and I are going on a road trip to acquire something very, very exciting, a rare, I would say actually, a unique opportunity to buy into our educational program and our snake breeding program, a pair of incredible snakes. So, that, that unique, that although it's came at a terrible, terrible time for us to actually buy these snakes, and it's also meant some sacrifices as well for the business, it's so unique, it has to be done. So, keep along and find out what's going on. Shivered. a bit hot and bothered now we've been in the van we've done over 400 miles we've been out basically all day long and we've come back with a pair of really really special snakes as part of our collection and one of them i'm going to show you now so have a look at this guy fantastic it's a girl creature. not a guy sorry it's a girl not a guy have a look at this beautiful animal absolutely fantastic now I don't think anyone watching this will know what species of snake this is, but if you think you do know what species of snake this is, comment below. I will say one thing, the great guy we went to meet, Ian, he gave this snake to George as a gift. It's not what we went for at all. What a, what a lovely gift. Comment below if you know what it is. Okay, okay, so we've been to get a pair of snakes, not just any pair of snakes, a pair of snakes that is already at breeding size. They're, they're already winning their bread last year. In fact, in one of our other road trip videos, you actually got to meet one of their offspring from this year. The female looks gravid, so she's possibly going to lay eggs anytime soon. How special are they? They're special to me because they're one of the indigo snakes, the dry mark on which is something I've been in love with since I was a small child. They're special because there's possibly only one other breeding pair in the UK. They're special because they're one of the most awesome kind of snakes there is. Really, really difficult to get hold of. We were hoping to get a male to go with our female next year, and then we'd have at least a four year wait until they were big enough to breed. So we'll talk a bit more about this um, in the rest of the video, but for sure it was an offer and unfortunate circumstances for someone else, but enough that there's no way, no way we could refuse. This is the male. These are absolutely stunning snakes. Masses of character, masses of attitude. Incredibly rare in the UK to get these captive bred. Or, or you, don't, you can't find a wild caught, and to get any captive bred ones are amazing. They are yellowtail Kribos. And to be able to not only have a juvenile that we're growing on, but to be able to actually be incredibly lucky. Now, normally, you know, we're not, we don't, we don't do well with luck. It's things that happen to other people, like really good luck, but really lucky. And it is, you know, not what you know; it's who you know. And kind of some bit of born out of someone else's misfortune, really. But look at these amazing animals. Have a look at you can see the, you know, the contrast. A lovely yellow, very strong snakes, indigo snakes, incredibly strong, bludgeon their prey, they're not venomous, <laughs> they don't constrict, but my goodness me, the power of these guys is amazing, and I'm not going to say it too loud, they kind of totally top trump by false water cobras, which I love dearly, but to give you some idea, this can grow to sort of nine feet plus, and this guy here, he's already pretty chunky creature but they've been on the road a long time let's pop this guy in his own closure and let's meet his girlfriend oh, here's the female 
absolutely stunning animal. Incredibly strong, incredibly lively. Beautiful yellow tail. As you can kind of see, the length of these beautiful snakes. There's nothing else really like the dry mark on the indigo snakes. The yellow tails are longer for their body mass than the you know the famous gorgeous eastern indigos. Not sure what's going on in there. They've mated. Nice if she's gravid. But we will find out. What an awesome, awesome species. Incredibly heavy. Solid bodied snakes. I don't know, maybe even more beautiful than the male. Her tail is so vivid and bright. Absolutely gorgeous snakes. Overly used word with this snake today. Gorgeous, gorgeous, gorgeous. Anyway, check out the rest of the video and we're gonna tell you why we've got them, what we've been up to, and how we're surviving running a reptile and a animal education business during a year nearly now of being able to have almost no bookings whatsoever, basically to make no money whatsoever to survive. It all costs a lot of money to run. And we'll tell you how these amazing yellowtail Kribos are fitted in to this year's story and going forward for the following years. Let's get her settled in, bless her. So, other than diversification, we've still got our own money and it's been really, really tough. We've had no help from the government and as I keep saying, it's, it's, it, we just fall through the loopholes. So, we have diversified, but we've also got to go out and earn money. And if it wasn't for me, I'll make Bob here. <laughs> Bob the tree surgeon, we wouldn't still be here because thanks to Bob, A, he pays me too much for a day's work, to be honest, and also, he's provided enough work that's just tickled the bank account over my personal account to actually pay the bills and survive and keep Raptor Exotics going. So today, absolutely gorgeous, look at this. This is a snippet of what we've done. We're clearing the hedge for the farmer before the birds breed so they can refence their land. It's a lovely office for the day, but of course, it's not running a reptile or an animal business, but without it, for sure, we'd be struggling. So thanks to Bob. It's really windy out here. Thanks to Bob. Check out the rest of the video to see how else we've kind of tried to survive going forward. Catch up soon. So why have we, in these times, been on a 400 mile trip to buy more snakes, another pair of snakes? It seems ludicrous, doesn't it? We've got lots of snakes and we've given up a lot of time, a lot of fuel money and a lot of money to buy a really specialist, really rare in, in captivity in England. An uh, unusual species of snake. Yellowtail Kribos, I think that's one of the breeder of this amazing species. The background noise is actually the dogs munching their tea because as you've seen today, I've been out doing a strange job for me. Just got back in, minging, need a shower. So come, come March, first lockdown, lockdown 1.0, as it's fashionable to say. A school educational business, Raptor Exotics, and out of school, uh, full quick flying displays throughout the summer months. What do we do? Lockdown's come, it's gonna be weeks at the time, we thought weeks, maybe months. What do we do? This is our choice, isn't it? It's do nothing, hope it goes away and we can get back to schools quicker rather than later. Be depressive about it and give up and let a business we've worked hard for for over 10 years slide down the pan because we just couldn't cope with the idea. Um, and others have, others have given up, and I don't mean because they've been depressed about it, but they've just given up their own reasons. It's, it's killed the businesses off, other similar businesses. Or we can be proactive. And of course, being us, it's, it's all about being proactive. So what we did, what we sort of endeavoured to do quite quickly off the bat was rebuild a much bigger reptile room, Raptor Exotics, because we actually had the time to do that, and at that time, a little bit in reserve. And then what we thought about was, well, I breed snakes that I love, such as my false water cobras, but we've got for our school educational business a variety of really unusual or rare or snakes that can tell a story. Why don't we pair them up? So we invested 
the little bit of money we had got in buying other snakes to pair up the rarer or the more unusual snakes that we actually have. And then we also brought some niche snakes, such as European species from other breeders that are hatchlings. It'll take two, three or four years to grow on and breed. And we also made an endeavour to breed things like our Puebla milk snake trio, which we've just used for schools and never thought about breeding them really. So why have we done that? Well, we've done that because it's another niche to the business, that a business that I thought would never fail because schools would always need us to help them with their amazing topic. And that, that market, I thought, was never going to be killed off, not in my sort of time. No one saw COVID coming along. Unfortunately, our idea, it has worked really well. And we've got this other niche now that we can, we can capture breed snakes which actually, rather than reinvesting more snakes, which we've done this year from our captive bread stock, we can actually use it as a, a sideline income for the business. All going well. <sighs> Due to a great guy called Ian's life plan has changed a little bit, all of a sudden, a breeding pair of yellow-tailed Kribos has come along. Now, we bought one this year to grow on and to pair up. And it's one of those opportunities that always come along when you're in difficulties, but it's an opportunity far too good to miss. These are very expensive, very rare species of snake with a lot of kudos from my school um, Amazon rainforest talks. And what do you do? Do you pass upon an, on a once in a lifetime opportunity for your business because you're in dire straits, or do you find a way to push forward and increase that business's potential? And of course, being proactive, We've had to make some tough decisions to look forward. Snakes that I've bred to keep back, my very best false water cobras that I'm holding back to grow on for another a more unusual coloured pair, for instance. We've had to put those back on the market as we, as we sold off our surplus stock. They've gone on the market to finance these other snakes. The hard decisions really aren't the, aren't the young breeders that we've bred ourselves. It's snakes that we've employed in raptor exotics or, or animals for many years. And I think, have a look at the pictures. So. I think things like our hognose snake, he's going off to, to pair up, he's going to go to great home. I think our huge bull snake, I never could find him a mate this year, he's going to go off to a good home, no problems there. But personally, as long as they go to good homes, I'm not overly attached to those guys. <clears throat> but we've had to go a step further, and what's been hard for George and I is to make a decision on animals that aren't key to raptor exotics, but that we actually love. And I think the biggest, the biggest one there that we've had to really talk about and decide whether we should go ahead, and that's Bindi, our larger blue tongue skink. Um, we've had her for years. She's a real star. We don't need her for Raptor Exotics, but we love her. She's a real star. And that's took a lot of thinking. And, and what's actually twisted our arm to, if you like, how can, we, how can we put it? It's almost like we're using her in a way, offsetting her, to, to keep the business alive. And that's, that's, you know, when it's a living thing that you love, that's a difficult decision to sort of make or say it like that. Luckily, she's going to a great couple I know that run a, a small reptile shop over in Whiz Beach. They adore blue tongue skinks. They've never seen one as stunning as her, and they're gonna keep her as their shop pet. And I think a really big, cracking looking blue tongue stink, what a skink rather, it's me that stinks today, is, the, is a real, you know, a real beautiful shop pet that's going to attract a lot of attention. So difficult decisions to make, but all proactive. And they have to be some of them business made decisions so that Rapture Exotics can weather this storm. We've been weathering the storm now for nearly a whole year. We know we're going to get through it, but sitting on our laurels was never going to work. It was never going to work, even with Bob, my good mate Bob, giving me a completely different kind of work, which I've done before, but a completely different work to earn money. Thank goodness for Bob, he has saved my life this year. But business-wise, we've had to diversify. And it's times like that that you realise you have to be more diverse. Our eggs were all in one basket because it was a basket I thought would never tip over. And it has, because something's come along that none of us planned. So keep watching the channel. We're surviving. We're doing what we can. We've got great things going on. And also today, even even dress like this after work. I've been to see the great couple that own Holdenby House and run the house, and we're still in talks with those guys of what we can push forward from the Icarus Falkery side of our sort of world. So keep watching that space, nothing to divulge yet in stone, but we're working hard to diversify and push on through this awful pandemic, and what we have to tell ourselves every single day, we're healthy.
really important. Lots going on in the world, financial crisis, we're healthy, and if we're healthy, we can push on. Other people are worse off for sure. Keep watching those vlogs, and really importantly to us, subscribe to our channel, because sometimes it's a little bit negative, but we're always gonna make positives out of the negatives, and they're the videos, you're gonna join us on this journey. Subscribe for us, and we'll see you next time.